Within the HIV infected population, um, we see a lot of syphilis, um, but that's because we screen for that um, when patients are diagnosed um, and subsequently, maybe once a year or every six months, or depending whether they've put themselves at risk of acquiring a sexually transmitted infection. But we screen for that. The, the, the way that infections or sexually transmitted infections are managed in Malaysia largely depends on whether patients have symptoms. So syphilis, we would screen whether they or not have symptoms, okay? So, that, 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 so we're picking up a lot of patients who have syphilis without having had any symptoms. Um, with respect to the other um, sexually transmitted infections, if they present with symptoms suggestive of a sexually transmitted infection, we would screen for that. Generally, that consists of gonorrhea and chlamydia, but largely syphilis. Syphilis remains an issue, a big issue, in, within the HIV-infected population. And it's something really that needs to be addressed and very much concentrated within the HIV-infected population. Why is that? So, it's largely maybe because of treatment optimism. You know, people are more... Um, um, so how they see, a lot of patients are beginning to see HIV as a chronic manageable disease and may not necessarily be taking the right precautions to prevent HIV or other sexually transmitted infections. It may be also that because now other forms of not very high risk sexual practices such as oral sex also result in um, transmission of syphilis. So you, and in, in situations like that, patients don't often use a condom um, with non-penetrative sexual intercourses um, and high numbers of sexual partners so and, and, and seeking partners through the internet or anonymous sites also have led to a, um, an increase in, in, in syphilis. So they seem to be concentrated in a certain pool. So this certainly needs to be scaled up and, and awareness of that is very important because it is really a, a, a major problem within the population. Well, the stages of syphilis, the majority of syphilis that we have seen though is asymptomatic, so patients may not experience any symptoms. But for those who do experience symptoms, um, patients can sometimes present with a painless ulcer um, on the genitals, so either in, so if he's a man, on the penis, in the anal area, or even sometimes uh, the, the, the mouth. Um, it's, it's interesting to note that the ulcer is, 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 is painless and sometimes patients or clients don't often notice the ulcer and it then heals spontaneously after about two to three weeks. Um, then it may go to a secondary stage which is characterized, patients often um, develop a widespread body rash which is red, it's not raised, uh, may be very extensive and often in, involves the palms and soles. And that's often a, a key sign. We find that in those patients who do present with syphilis, um, present with this rash involving the palms and soles. Now, if left untreated, syphilis can progress to involve other systems such as the nervous system um, and, and, and the heart. Um, so, but I think for purposes of, of, of symptoms, patients often present with the symptoms that I, I mentioned. Well, that's true. Yeah, syphilis is very easily treatable. Um, it is a bacterial infection, unlike HIV, which is a viral infection. Um, and therefore, um, it is very treatable with a penicillin-based anti antibiotic, generally. Um, the problem with, with, with it's, I mean, the thing is, it's often given in the form of an injection, um, either one injection or three injections, but it's very easily treatable. Treatment of penicillin does not protect from future infections, and it's also useful for for client groups to know that because if you re-expose yourself again then you end up having to get treated again so it doesn't confer you're not protected from it once you're infected unlike some infections.